The movie, Girl Can't Help It. Question one, brief comment. What did you think of this movie when you first saw it? And what do you think of it now? Okay, well, this is one of uh, one movie uh, that is sort of the opposite of uh, it is for me with a lot of other films. Uh, I, I, I like it a lot more now because uh, I, I, I just was there for the rock and roll when I was younger, and I didn't like, you know, the three, the three chuckles, or I didn't really dig, you know, John, Johnny Olin, you know, that approach to, to rock and roll. Yeah. But now I love it, all of it. So now there's so much more for me to stand back and enjoy. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, Tom Kenny, what what is your uh, brief comment, and what did you think of the movie when you first saw it, and what did you think of it now? Tom Kenny, go. Yeah, Big Sandy is so right. I think when I watch it, I, I have it on a muddy VHS that I think I pulled off of TBS <laughs> or some cable station back in the early days. And it's uh, it's regarded as being the first rock and roll musical, the first rock and roll movie musical. And same thing, I, I, I watched it. At first, I think when I first saw it, I was a little irritated. Oh, they're cutting out all the guitar solos, you know, 20 Flight Rock <laughs> and like, a, you know, yeah. a, a, you know, uh, Gene Vincent and all that. Yeah. But now when you watch it, like Robert, I have a big appreciation for like all the acts in it. It's kind of like the Tammy show in that even the lesser mm. acts yeah. are really awesome. Like even the slightest act in it is kind of cool. Like you said, the chuckle, the three chuckles with a big accordion, you know, like that. I would love to see that in a club. Yeah. And, um, you know, Jane, Jane Mansfield is the, uh, if I can use the term titular star <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 playing playing um, somebody without any real discernible talent, but her gangster girlfriend, kind of like uh, Citizen Kane or whatever, wants to make her a career as as a rock and roll singer. And uh, uh, he presses this kind of broken down alcoholic press agent played by Tom Ewell into the job. And in between, it's really just an excuse to hang these 17 or 18 musical numbers on. In the course of a 90 minute movie, there's 17 or 18 musical numbers. And it's really great to see all those people. I'm going way longer than you did, Sandy. It's great to see those people in color and think about what a huge thing it was for kids back then, rock and roll freaks, to see Little Richard, Eddie Cochran, uh, Gene Vincent, uh, just all those people in living, beautiful cinemascope color. I mean. And what do you think of it now? Dave Stuckey, go. Well, then I was out of my mind that I was finally getting to see it. You know, just because you heard about it, you heard about it, you heard everybody that's in it. It's in color. It's in cinemascope. Uh, and then now, uh, I, I, I was blown away to see that it's Close just as me. great 40, like 40 years but later. I mean, it holds up, you know, yeah, it's like the first big budget uh, uh, rock and roll movie. You know, it was kind of legitimizing because, you know, you had those little Alan Free drive-in movies, yeah. uh, which were cool to see the stars in Chuck Berry and whatnot. But yeah. to see... Like everybody in like getting the full treatment, man. You know, Frank Tash, a big time director who started in cartoons, made it all cartoony and colorful and and amazing. So, uh, you know, I, I was gonna say like Tom, like last week we talked about uh, Big Sandy when he went with all of his friends, couldn't wait to see La Bamba. Imagine kid, being a kid in the fifties and this thing coming out. Good it must have just been, yeah, it must have just been an explosion. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, wait, yeah, because so- you know. You forget that, uh, you know, like the famous people, especially uh, rock and roll people, weren't as ubiquitous then. Like you couldn't just log on and see them or, or you know, they weren't on television a whole lot. So you go to this yeah. movie theater and there they are in this big movie screen and they they just look great and they sound great. And the movie's full of great character actors. I was going to say what Dave did, that the director, Frank Tashlin, started out in Looney Tunes. So the movie's got a really cartoonish sensibility and it's full of like sex and dirty jokes and loud <laughs> honking music and cool dancing and yeah. and it's 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 kind of like i think like the original movie of hairspray by john waters in that it kind of simultaneously makes fun of like rock and roll but it's also very loving about it like it yeah. also gets why yeah. rock and roll is awesome yeah. and why you can kind of make fun of it yeah yeah okay that's right now that leads us to our next question but we're going to stop with paul paul Without naming the name, how are we going on our panelist? Who's winning? <laughs> we have a we have a pretty clear winner. Uh, not winner. We have someone way ahead, someone in the middle, and someone way behind. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, what do you know about that? <laughs> well, I, we are gonna. Hey, friends, we are, stick around because we're gonna reveal the winner of this of this uh, very friendly debate. Next question. Sweet. Yes, sir. Thanks Let, for narrowing that down. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> this time we're gonna start. 
let's start with Dave, if that's okay. We're going to mix it up. Everyone gets a different turn. Now, uh, right. Dave, what was the most risque scene slash gag line for the time? It's 1956. What was the most risque gag or line, sir? Well, you know, the movie is, is packed with them, and they're virtually all at Jane Mansfield's expense. So even though she's like the stereotypical 50s hourglass, I mean, it's blown up to... Uh, oh, yeah. uh, bigger than life, she's still charming as hell. I mean, yeah. she's just so cute in yes. this, especially but, by the uh, beach. The, oh, the, the yeah, the, the gag, the one that I can't even believe in the is in the movie, is the gag with the milkman and the exploding milk. <laughs> oh god! How, how could that have even made it? I, it I it's guess. amazing. It's like a, You're so she, right on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I won't say it. I won't say. It. I can't even say it now. But they they showed it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, uh, and, and not a high seat floating out of the milk bottle. <laughs> oh, awesome! I, I didn't get it. Good. <laughs> Let me, oh, you never do. I We're know. almost tied all the way up now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's go. Big, big scene. Oh, oh, let's do. Uh, no, sorry. Let's do Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny. Okay. What was the most risque scene, gag, or line in the movie, sir? Well, milk bottles, uh, you know, creamy white fluid exploding out of a milk bottle when Jane Mansfield walks by is 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 not even that. That's not even a double entendre. That's I don't even know no. what to call that. But uh, when that but, but also, oh, she says crazy. so many things, and like you said, Dave, she's so charming. In fact, my wife, who watched the movie with me uh, for this, said, "Wow, I think she's better than Marilyn Monroe. Like, I think yeah. she's like, she she's like a yeah, great comedian, and it's kind of it kind of makes you." feel the tragedy that they never quite found another vehicle like that for her where she could really let her comedy chops play. She's That's really right. funny. She's really likable. She looks great, obviously, and she keeps on smiling despite the fact that that girdle but must I have been extremely painful. Uh, like that corset <laughs> she's wearing. And uh, I like when she says, uh, everybody thinks I'm a sex pot. They don't think I'm equipped for motherhood. <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, oh, yeah. you are. You're, you're equipped for motherhood. <laughs> just great. And they just leave. But for Tom Ewell, they just leave. He doesn't even respond. They're just a, a take on his face when yes. she says that. It's and he's so great. great in it, too. He's it out. Yeah. He's, so he's great good. in it, too. And he doesn't he doesn't overplay the 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 desire, the, the horniness thing. You know, like, like, like he's kind of trying to he's trying to tamp it down because he doesn't want to get killed because she's a gangster's uh, yeah. girlfriend. And I, I just think... Uh, yeah, he, he's terrific. She's terrific. Uh, uh, that, it's funny. It's, this isn't even really a debate because we all love the freaking movie so much. <laughs> all That's right, then. True. Big, Big Sandy, what was your fate most risque scene, gag or line, sir? Big Sandy, well, go. Well, well I thought, uh, you know, uh, Barry, you know, the paper boy, ha had a few. To me, that were just a little bit more risque. There was a ton, like Dave said, a ton of this kind of dialogue in the, throughout the movie. But just the fact that a kid was saying it. Now yeah. it happens in every mo in every kid movie now all yeah. the time. Yeah. Then I think, yeah. wow, well, they're having a kid say that. Uh, so Barry, Go <laughs> Barry Gordon would said like, if, uh, if, 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 she's if, a girl, if that's Barry. a girl, I don't know what my sister is then. If she's a girl, then I don't know what my sister is. Huh? Of course, a kid wouldn't say that uh, <laughs> then or now, I don't think. But still, it was, it was a little more, wow. I mean, because the writing is, is pretty funny. Uh, but yeah. to have a kid say that, I think that was unusual and kind of stood out. So made it that much more risque for me. Now, I probably would have thought yeah. it, but I developed early. <laughs> <laughs> I could grow this beard when I was nine. Well, I'm sure, but yes, we think those things, but we don't uh, express it in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least but, I did. But, when Ellie Mae Clampett would come down the stairs uh, 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 of, of the Clampett Mansion, I would think unholy thoughts. Yeah, yeah. But, oh. well, like... Oh, stop that. It, it, <laughs> was, was, that? it was Julie <laughs> Newmar. <laughs> hey, Paul, how are, we, how, how are they scoring now, sir? All right. We have a clear winner so far. Someone ahead and two ties now. Okay, that means we need to go to question number three. Question who wore two ties? What? Who wore <clears throat> nope. two ties? Sounds like my closet. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> right. Question number three. If your band was in the movie, what scene would you want it to be in? For example, like Gene Vincent in the rehearsal hall or Little Richard in the uh, nightclub. Which setting would you like to see your band play at? In a lot, in good question. a real place. Go, uh, Big Sandy. Okay, this is this is something that I have thought about and did think about before and sort of made happen, like uh, throughout the whole movie, really. But I think uh, probably mostly with if you look at that scene with the three chuckles, yeah, I was going for that 
and that's what I had in my mind. But if you think of the cover of uh, uh, Jumping from Six to Six, yeah, uh, yeah. with with, wow. with the curtain, with the colored lights, and that really shiny uh, 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 floor in front of it, yeah. And, yeah. and that that's what I had. That's what I had in my mind. We didn't completely pull it off, but that's what when I was watching that. Used to watch that movie. I thought like. Of course, we all wanted to live in that world that 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 yeah. movie so oh, beautifully yeah. painted. Yeah. But I, yeah. I I felt good that it, I actually had a chance to kind of do that. That's what I was thinking anyway. I don't know if I pulled it off, but that's where I was coming from for the cover of Jumping from Six to Six. Yeah, after watching that movie, I figured that. Dave Stuckey, where? Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, what was my question? If your band was in the movie, what scene would you like it to be in, sir? I would like. I mean, first of all, I can't even picture myself in that world because it's just too. It's too much like uh, heaven, like my version of heaven. But <laughs> That's cool. I would like, to be, I would like the band. To be, I would like the band to be set up on the sidewalk when she makes her entrance past the oh. milk truck and all that, oh, playing man. the tune. I would love to be doing that. I mean, it's just, but I can't even. I can't. That's one of those you can't even. But you it's know, one of the great scenes in movie history. I mean, that whole... It really is. Segment, it really oh is. My good, the song matches the scene. Or every yeah. little moment is... Oh, my Perfect. God. Was that Warner yeah. Brothers okay. Studios? You guys are Hollywood guys. Was that Warner yeah. Brothers? That was MGM. Oh. It was MGM, yeah. They probably yeah. still have the street there, Dave. Yeah, I know. I guess we could if we could get on the lot. Yeah. But it's it's just so... Like there's she probably, starts and you there's probably not that much going on there now. <laughs> so that's true. That's a fair point. But you know, you remember when that scene comes on, and you just go, "Okay, like this is what you're waiting for in the movie." Is yeah. that scene particularly? And the guy and the, and the neighbor. I have to say, the other the other great gag is the neighbor. The neighbor getting his mail, and he looks up and she's like, and they do the cartoonish his glasses break. Yeah. <laughs> it is it is so cartoon, but it just but it's it's perfect, man. That, that, that's a throwback to these cartoon days, man. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's funny. Because those are animated, you know, like the cracks are animated on his glasses. Yeah. So well, it's well, a cartoon well, yeah. with a lot, you know, with a live dude. It's, it's yeah. And then Dave, so, Dave, if you're like me, you think of the guy that drew the cracks on the glasses. <laughs> like, you know, that was some guy's yeah. job. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, oh, this guy looks at this girl. She's beautiful. His glasses just, you know, and and then, you know, okay, I can do that. You know, like, yeah. like everybody's got a job in Hollywood. Yeah. You know, we'll save, we'll save that part for the podcast, though. <laughs> hey, Tom, hey, Tom Kenny. Special guest next week. Tom Kenny. But, if your band was in the movie, what scene would you like to be in, sir? I know you got me? a full band. Yeah. If your band. Look, yeah. You, it'd you have to like, be a pretty big set. You got like 20 um, guys. I would have to say the scene where Edmund O'Brien is in the bathtub. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I think, uh, uh, the tape. <laughs> you know, this is kind of a cheat, but when you see Little Richard and Fats Domino in this movie, which of course are just great favorites of all of ours, and just like, I mean, I cry when I see them. You know, when I see those scenes, I'm like, I, my eyes just water because it's just so beautiful. I want to be there so bad. But they're bands, Little Richard's Upsetters, and, and Fats Domino's band in both the scenes that they're in are so great. And I just I just want to yeah. be in the scene with them so I can talk to those guys and see okay. those guys. And, you know, it's just unbelievable. That, that relates to another one of my answers later. But that, oh, okay. I'm, but I'm, we're all with each other on this whole thing, man. Okay, guys. I know, no counter, it's all point, no counterpoint. Okay, hold on, guys. We're going we to we're gonna move it along now. Now, Paul, quickly, how are we doing on our scores here? Man. All right, there's a somebody is ahead, and then one per, one point behind, and one point behind for second and third. It's very close. The, the, the suspense oh, is I, killing I, 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 me. Spence Tom Kenny is losing. All right. <laughs> okay, friends, here we go. Here, here's here's a last question before the lightning round, and please make this your answers brief. Okay. We're starting with Tom Kenny. I can't do that. What bugged you about the movie, Tom Kenny? Go. Uh, what bugged me about the movie? Some beautiful jukeboxes were destroyed. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh I felt the pain there. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I felt that pain. <laughs> Where they're throwing jukeboxes out of windows because the mob is moving in on the jukebox racket. You know, it's just like, no. I think only two are actually yeah. destroyed on the, By on the way, on screen. Can, but the, it... can I say, this jukebox <laughs> over here figures <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> this very model of jukebox is in the movie. Well, wow. 20 points that's, extra for reenacting the, dis the destruction it. of it. <laughs> I'm like, I have that one. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, Big Sandy, uh, you're, uh, what bugged you most about the movie Big Sandy Go? Well, this goes back to when I was a younger person. Uh, m the biggest 
things about the movie at the time that bugged me were uh, all focused around Eddie Cochran. Uh, like Tom mentioned, the guitar solo getting cut out. You know, like, you went at that, oh, uh. Uh, yeah. And the fact that with the, what we saw of him was limited to that, that TV set. Big, the biggest part of that is that they were insinuating that he didn't have a good voice or something, because, yeah. yes. you know, they're like, hey. you, you know. He's uh, not a trained singer. No, but, I, but I remember yeah. as a teenager thinking, wait a minute, they're kind of, they're, they're insulting him. They're insulting Eddie Cochran. Yeah. So that, that, that really got me, that kind of got me, got me riled up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But they don't go all the way and say that he can't sing. He's not no, a no, trained no. singer. They he don't doesn't have a trained voice. Well, we know yeah. what they meant. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we do. Yes, Dave, we do. Dave now Stuckey. I'm okay with that. Dave Stuckey, what bugged you about, yeah. about the movie? Dave Stuckey, go. I would say, uh, Though uh, Bobby Troop, you know, wrote the amazing title track, the great Bobby Troop, uh, and he also 86. unfortunately wrote Rock Around the Rock Pile, which is so <laughs> cringeworthy. But <laughs> I have to say the main thing about is that the movie is not twice as long. That's really the main thing. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Hey, okay. Dave, can we it's make a point here? Like nine, nine can we make a point here that Julie London was married to both Bobby Troop and... Jack Webb. Yes, exactly. Although they, they were not married yet. Troop right. and, no, and that was in between. That was in between. To... They had just it was kind of in between. They had just been married the year before. Oh. And while we're talking about that, let me just say real of them. Yeah, but think about this. Tom Ewell, what kind what kind of great career did Tom Ewell have? In two years, he co starred with Marilyn Monroe as a love interest and Gene Mansfield as a love interest and got serenaded by, by Julie London in uh, a, as an apparition. I mean, who wants a better career than that? Every dude <laughs> fantasy. And I think that's where those films work. Another reason, because he's just like this every man, sort of just like, you yeah. know, yeah. One, in this movie, a drunk and just... Not, but every, every guy said, man, my God, that could be me, or I wish it was me, or why can't it be me? <laughs> right. I was okay, next, going... lightning round. Okay, lightning, lightning round. round. Paul, hey, Paul, quickly. I'm kind of ugly. What? I have big ears. I like to drink. <laughs> <laughs> that could be me. <laughs> Paul, quickly, how are we doing? We still got a first place, second, and third, all separated by just one point. Unbelievable. Okay. This is this is going to do it. Lightning round. One answer. Here we go. I'm just going to start with Big Sandy and make make my way around. Favorite line by Big Sandy, go. Obvious one, but uh, ask my agent. Agent? Oh, so the beautiful lady's a performer, eh? Ask my agent. Oh, what do you do? Uh, sing? Dance? Ask my agent. Oh. Because I still hear it said, and I instantly know. Oh, you know that movie? It's sort of, sort of <laughs> yeah, like a little, uh, little, like a little, uh, little, little code word, code little phrase. You know the movie? You know. And Dave, go ahead. Dave Stuckey, yeah. favorite line. Well, I was gonna try to resist one of the ten thousand boob jokes in the movie, but, <laughs> but Sandy took my uh, took my answer. Her favorite line was about Eddie Cochran. See, he ain't a trained singer. Well, that guy ain't got a trained voice either, and he's one of the top record stars in the country. Not saying he can't sing, but saying that he's the same as Georgie for some reason. Yeah. And get, like, it's the same. You can, she can't sing at all. He, anyway, I think <laughs> yeah. that's just, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just can't. Yeah. It's such of a stretch of a, of a plot point just to work it in. <laughs> yes. Just to get, yeah. you know, just and to get. For Eddie, that, just that, had to go that, along with it. Okay, to, 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 Tom, Tom yeah. Kinney. Favorite line. But then she actually can sing, so maybe he does like Eddie Cochran. Oh, uh, yeah. And of course, uh, let's not forget the car accident uh, with Gene and Eddie both in it. You know, that kind of makes the the fact that they're both in this ah. movie kind of, kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, I would have to say it's it's not really one line. But uh, 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 take it easy, Fats. Rome wasn't built in a day. What? Well, she ain't Rome. What we're talking about is already built. Oh, easy, Fats. It takes time. Rome wasn't built in a day. She ain't Rome. What we're talking about is already built. Oh, yeah. Wow, wow, yeah. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Okay, now yeah. remember this is the lightning round, guys. We gotta go <laughs> what fast. What a lightning round it is. Okay, are we, yeah. this, time we're, this time we're gonna start with Dave. Dave, best, uh, best band in the, in the show. Well, uh, the Trineers, the Trineers, and the Trineers would be my three choices. It's amazing. Julie London for me, because at that time when I first saw it, I already knew rock and roll. So when you first hear that the bass line coming in, and, and uh, yeah. uh, you hear Barney Kessel's guitar, and then, then yeah. she appears like a little, like a ghost. It was a world I didn't know about. So to me, it's like, yeah. as a kid, it's like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Tom That's Kinney, best good. band. That's 
I would have to say in the in the in the kind of the opening scene where 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 Tom Yule is checking out acts to sign and Nino Tempo jumping around blowing on his saxophone just laying on his yeah. back and freaking out and we have talked uh, uh, the three of us have talked uh, we've all met Nino Tempo he's still with us and still a beautiful guy and and I just had lunch with him before the pandemic Whoa. Wow. Uh, me and my friend wow. Andy Paley yeah. and wow. and so uh, I got to say Nino Tempo got to give him some props right yeah. on okay yeah. La- most memorable character big sandy go uh, the, the Barry, the, the paper boy, okay. Barry Gordon. I, when I first saw the movie on TV with my dad, I was about the age that he was, and I thought, look at that kid. He's saying like dirty things and hanging out <laughs> in my mind, thinking he got to hang out with Little Richard and Fats Domino. So that was that's that was mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dave Dave Stuckey, what uh, most memorable uh, character? It's hard, but I, uh, I I'll give extra props to Mousy, who that's mm. sidekick, oh. because that's Henry Jones who also gets points because he's the creepy caretaker in the good in the bad seed. Oh, Remember that? Oh, I know what you did, little great, girl. Great actor, great character. <laughs> so Tom, great, so great. Tom, Tom Kenny. Yeah. Most memorable well, character, I, I, sir. I should mention that when uh, when when I was first getting to know Dave Stuckey, he found a dog wandering around in the parking lot of the Palomino Club in North <coughs> Hollywood and named it Henry Jones. Wow. <laughs> so, oh, uh, oh, yes. So, uh, Henry. Right? Henry. So, uh, I would have to say my favorite uh, favorite character in the movie, uh, uh, three favorite characters in the movie, Jane Mansfield and her uh, uh, two Oh, friends. hey, Tay, come on now. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey. Oh, anyway. Last question. We're starting with, uh, we're going to start with uh, Tom Kinney. Hey, what's, what's the closest club you've been to that actually resembles one of these nightclubs in the movie? Have you ever been to yeah. a club where everyone's dressed up like that in a row? Right, that's where you can tell that the guys didn't have first-hand experience with rock and roll, right, where everybody's kind of like at a, at a nightclub. And uh, I would have to say the Iguana Club in New York, seeing Vince G- Giordano and his Nighthawks uh, in New York City, yeah. where that actually did have a dress code and stuff like that, and they cool. were playing like 20s and 30s, uh, uh, a hot jazz of the type that Dave plays now. And, uh, yeah, that right was on. it. Dave Stuckey. Well, you know, Cool nightclubs are like the Dead Sea Scrolls these days, but I will I will give props to either the Cicada or Club downtown or Clifton's downtown. They're both pretty. I mean, they're original spots. Yeah. So they get that, and uh, I, yeah, I would say I would see one of those. Right on, Dave. Can I say I was gonna say Clifton's, but I figured that I would leave that for you. All right. <laughs> I appreciate that. Big Sandy, yeah. I, Big Sandy. I know you've been all around the world. Uh, what club uh, resembles something like this oh, in the movie? Well, well, to me, there's there's none that that match that world ex- exactly. But it's the closest in my lifetime was during the '90s when the swing thing was ha- kind of really happening. Like it could could have been just about uh, uh, like a handful of different clubs in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, you, you yeah. know, from, from Bimbo's to Cafe du Nord to the, but yeah. but yeah. people would get dressed to the nines, and you could imagine you were living it. Even though they were focusing on a different era, you, it was just you could imagine you were living at a different time where people used to get dressed up. And anyway. So, uh, yeah. Right on. Okay, that's that concludes our game. Uh, hey, Paul, who who won this thing? Please st- start with number three first, then second, then first. Please go. Humiliate right. me. Uh, we unfortunately, guys, we got a tie for second and third here. That's okay. <clears throat> who are they? At twenty nine points, we got Dave and BS Big Sandy tied <laughs> at second and third. Oh. And just to be honest, Tom I'll buy ran... you an Italian beef and you buy me an Italian beef. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I have to say Tom ran away with this pretty early and it was hard to catch up with him, but you guys got That's very just close. I talked the most. Yeah. Actually, so Tom, you got 30 points. Oh. I did cut I cut off some of your points cuz you went over your time, but <laughs> oh. you, you still got 30. But, but he did go oh, the extra mile if, if you only know what that really meant. <laughs> <laughs>